This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to the program. Hey, it's the end of the week, and we've had a great week with my friend, Joseph Z. Thank you, Rick. Hey, Thank I'm you. glad you're here. Oh, I'm just honored to be with you. Before we go any further, tell our audience again how they can find you. They can find me at josephz.com, or you can find me on social media, on all the different social media platforms. You just type in Joseph Z. We're live there every single weekday morning, Monday through Friday. Now, Joseph really has a prophetic ministry. It's very rare that I say that about anybody. But I've really watched Joseph for a long time. He's Bible-based, really anchored in the Word of God. And I've never heard him say anything weird. That is a blessing. <laughs> it's good to find somebody that really has bona fide prophetic ministry. But this week, he and I are talking about the ministry of angels. And Joseph, it's been good. It's been really good. Like, I'm really sorry today's the last program. I am too. I've enjoyed this. It's been wonderful. But today is also the last day, which we're offering Joseph's series, which is called Servants of Fire. It's really these programs. It's me and Joseph. It's mainly Joseph. I throw in a little, but it's really, really valuable. And I want you to order it along with the study guide. All you have to do is go online right now or give us a call and you can order these. And again, today is the last day that we're offering it. And today is also the last day which we're offering Joseph's book, which is called Servants of Fire. I'm asking you to please order this and order more than one. It is so good to finally have discovered a book about angels that's deep, easy to read, and Bible-based. It is just amazing. And when I sat down to read this, I read it from beginning to end in one setting and was so glad that Joseph asked me to write the foreword because finally I found a book on angels that I wanted to endorse. And friends, I want you to order yours again by going online or giving us a call right now. And when you reach out to us, ask us to pray for you. My friends, this is not just a trite cliche with me. We're really people of prayer. And if you'll let us know how to pray for you by either calling us or by sending your email, the moment your email shows up in the inbox or the moment the phone rings, Denise and I and our team, we're really going to release our faith for God to move in your life and to do something spectacular for you. But let us know how to pray for you. Amen. But Joseph, let's pick up where we left off yesterday, but I want to begin by reading Hebrews 1.14. Yes. Where the Bible speaks about angels, and it says, Are they not all ministering spirits? Yes. And that word ministering, as I said in a previous program, is a form of the Greek word diakonio, which is where we get the word for a deacon. Mm -hmm. Well, a deacon is one who serves tables, who meets needs, and now we find that angels are sent forth to meet needs. That's really what they are sent to do. And angels do all kinds of things. You know, in addition to Joseph's book, I have my book, which is called A Light in Darkness. So good. I have an entire chapter in that book where I describe what angels do and what angels do not do. But this verse says they're sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. In other words, for people that are saved, me, Joseph, you, anybody that's saved, there are angels on assignment. Now, what is unfortunate, Joseph, is a lot of them are just twiddling their thumbs because nobody's activating their service. That's right. How do you activate angelic ministry? Man, you go to the Word of God. You do it God's way. You don't pray to angels. You never pray to angels. Never, never, never. And if you hear anybody telling you to pray to angels or anybody who is regularly getting involved in long discourses with angels, you need to back off. I agree. You don't pray to angels. Okay. Well, you recognize Revelation 19, verse 10. It talks about that where John had an encounter with an angel, and it was so magnificent, so over the top. John began to worship the angel, but the angel said to him, see that you do not do that. Angels, real angels, they bring glory to Jesus. And angels never teach. They never teach. Never. Never. If you ever find somebody who says they got a teaching from an angel, it's a red flag. Angels do not teach. Angels are repeaters. Yes. They make announcements. 
that are verbatim, word for word, what they were told to say. And when they're finished delivering a message, boom, they're gone. They are. They're not teachers. And any time that you hear a cult or a religious group who says, well, we got a teaching from an angel, well, you just need to go somewhere else. <laughs> it's because true. they did not get anything from a real angel. Maybe it was an angel of light. Right. Okay. An angel of light. The fascinating thing about angels, or as the book of Job calls them, sons of God, you know, these, these created flames of fire. It's so clear that they want to do God's will so much that they looked at the beginning of man, the fall of their mutinous brothers. They saw all this narrative. They watched the garden. They watched the Old Testament. They watched every judgment, every sowing and reaping, every time and season, all the way to the New Testament when angels began to burst forth, not singing, but declaring peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Now, why did you say not singing? Because I learned that from you. Angels don't sing. No. Well, I can just hear somebody saying, what? Well, maybe they do. But there's really no scripture which just specifically says angels sing. The Bible says they declare. They declare. Maybe they do sing. I kind of want to believe they sing. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. But the Bible doesn't specifically say that. Okay, go ahead. So they come and they begin to declare. They're declaring peace on earth, goodwill towards men. I believe that was them looking at the whole narrative of the whole Old Testament and eternity past. They'd seen all these things. It says they shouted for joy as they saw the earth created in the book of Job. They saw all these things, the, the, the just narrative that was unfolding so dramatically. They get to the New Testament and now... God is manifest in the flesh through Christ Jesus, the Son. And He's making a way for humanity, things angels desire to look into, as you explained to us. And you're looking at this narrative, and now with the New Testament church, angels are just waiting. They're desiring, I believe with fervency, to be released, to be sent out, to be activated by the body of Christ. And all the powers of darkness, all the wickedness that's trying to fight all of us in this present evil age we're living in, we must learn to do this. And angels are waiting for it. And I mean, if demon spirits are operative, doesn't it make sense that angels would be operative? Absolutely. It makes total sense. I think it's an interesting thing that the narrative and origin of demons is, you know, it's speculative and you can see all that, but they show up on the scene and then all these things are happening and angels for the first time in the New Testament were able to be empowered by God to see darkness driven away. Think about it, Acts chapter 4. Come on. Angels show up to set the apostles free from prison. Yes. Acts chapter 12, angels show up to set Peter free from Amazing. prison. Amazing. Acts chapter 26 and 27, an angel shows up and speaks to Paul about being safe on the ship. I think it's I mean, great. They really came to help. Well, Psalm 91, when it talks about in their hands, they will take you up. Right? Yes. Their hands. I, that really struck me, Rick. I was thinking about this. Their hands. The hands of angels, their hands. That means they will do things in the natural. They will physically alter things if they're given permission by God. They have tremendous strength. Tremendous. Superhuman strength. Yes. Well, they, they shook the prison. They smacked Peter. They rolled the stone in, from in front of their grave. <laughs> it's so that, awesome. That stone weighed tons and tons. It did. One angel just pushed it out of the just way. Just pushed it out of the way. And that angel was so big. Really? That the Bible says that when the disciples came, they saw the angel sitting on top of it with his, he was so big, all he had to do was just turn around and sit on top of that big stone. That's amazing. He was enormous. That's amazing. And angels usually are very large. They're very large. That's amazing. You know, when you're looking at this type of picture, the question becomes, how do we activate them? All these angels that are ready, they're eager with anticipation, they're looking into these things with expectation, they want to participate. But the body of Christ, I believe, has either had religion hijack the image of angels, or they get so much goofy, off-the-rails teaching on angels. I think little cherubs, yeah. little babies with wings. <laughs> That is, the, there's no such thing as baby angels. Well, what it does is diminish the real thing. It does. It diminishes them. These are servants of fire. And why fire? Because our God is a consuming fire. And I believe, you know, you might have to take some, you know, speculative leaps with it, but I believe it's reasonable to consider that angels maybe came right out of the consuming fire. I believe they did. They were created from God himself. Yes. And they're emissaries of him. 
They go out, and that's why they heed his voice. They hear his voice. They are mighty in strength and power, and they're waiting to be activated. And here is what the church has been missing. We have everything we need. It's just a revelation of what we have that is necessary. Now, we're not adding to the work of the cross. Never. Angels have not purchased our healing. Never. They have not purchased our salvation. No. But they come as servants to do other things for us. They enforce what we have. They enforce what Jesus did. They enforce what already is. They protect us. They yes. deliver us. Often they provide for us. Yes. There's so many examples of angels showing up to feed people. Yes. To take care of people. And the thing we need to do as a believer, and I use this terminology called weaponizing our faith. We need to weaponize our faith. I like that. And what do we do to do that? We weaponize our faith by spending, and I'll use this word, you'll appreciate it, copious amounts of time in the Bible, in praying in the Spirit, quoting the Scripture, and building up our faith. A lot of people can quote the Bible, and it's sometimes just empty, like it falls flat. The devil could quote the Bible. But when we quote the Bible mixed with our faith, we mix it with our faith. There is a potency in that where the voice of God comes alive. And I believe angels sense that. They see that. They're activated. It's like they're put into service and they begin to act. And I think that is what is needed more than ever right now. A real bona fide prayer life mixed with the Word of God standing in faith. And that's what happened to me. I was doing a broadcast one day, Rick, and after I got done with the broadcast, I've been praying in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit, and then suddenly I had a manifestation of a voice. Like it, it almost like shouted to me, and it was so powerful and began to tell me what I should do with my ministry. And I don't say that to get sensational, but I say it because when you begin to do the principles that we write in the book, we talk about. I believe God is looking for a church, a body of Christ, that will activate the armies of heaven through His Word, through proper protocol, and I believe we're undefeatable when we do that. I really do. We can take territory that's not been taken before. You can do impossible things that have never been done before when you begin to do this. Now, another thought I have, and this is something I've speculated about and considered, because uh, you and I have had good discussions about things. Well, actually, I agree with most of your speculation. Okay. <laughs> you know, when your brain is so loaded with the Bible, yeah. your speculations are kind of Bible-based. Well, you got to stay in the confines of Scripture. I yeah, like what you, one, you do. one person says, I don't let the, and some people don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe, but I really do believe we got to let the Bible confront us about speculation and all of it. That's right. But when we're looking at certain things, I've thought about this. I like to write this way and think this way. What will it be like in the future? What's the purpose of angels ongoing? Because we know the narrative. We know that the end of the age is here. We know that we're coming into the last of the last days, and then the end times will erupt, and then we go beyond that. There will be a day where suddenly we're ruling and reigning with the Lord forever. And the question I have is... I look forward to that. Oh, Rick. Actually, it starts now. It starts now. This is a period of pre-qualification. We're all qualifying for what we're going to do in the next age. Wow. That's why it's important that you need to be faithful. It's not just about getting a good salary now or just about being a good dad. God is watching you. You are in a pre-qualification phase for what you're going to do in the age to come. And if you don't go do a good job now, your assignment will probably be pretty minor. I want to be very faithful now because in eternity, I want to some big assignments. I don't like boredom. So I want to be busy for eternity. Well, Rick, I just, I got to say something. You, you not only have been such a great teacher to the body of Christ and so many people that just admire you for your teaching and they know you that way, but you really are a father to so many of us and we're so grateful for you. Well, thank you, Joseph. You've, you've helped us amazingly. Well, thank so, you. Just keep going. Okay. Going into the future, the future, eternity, future. When you look at that, we're called to rule and reign. Jesus is the King of the Kings and the Lord of the Lord. So what the Bible says, Revelation 1-5. It's powerful. He is king of the princes of the earth. Wow. He's the one calling the shots. Wow. And in that time, I believe what started in the garden, I believe was to advance. I believe God called Adam to take dominion over and subdue the garden and the earth. Who's to say that it won't go well beyond that? I believe there'll be a day or an age to come that when we are doing assignments and taking positions that God calls us to go do, that angels will assist. They'll be our companions for reigning 
in eternity. Well, you know, make it, it's, it's scriptural. Yes. They are sent to minister to the heirs of, salvation. heirs of salvation. It doesn't say that that will ever end. And they'll continue to build. They'll continue to help. It's going to be interesting. We build a building. We do something. Maybe angels will be part of the work crew. It's going to be interesting to see that. It's going to be interesting as we take territory for God. Because God also probably would get pretty bored pretty quick if all we do is sit around and talk and float around on clouds. I don't believe that's going to be the future. I believe there's going to be mighty things the Lord has prepared. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered the heart of man, the things the Lord has prepared. And I believe that is eternity future the things that are going to advance and take place. And angels will be right there as working companions with us to take territory together. That is an exciting, exciting concept to me. I, I believe God is doing that. But we learn, as you just said, to practice today. We're, we're qualifying for what we're going to do then. And that includes, I believe, activating angels. How to pray. How to get them to take territory with you today. Okay, so we have a mom at home watching right now. And mom, yes. thank you for watching. Thank you. And she's concerned about her marriage or her family or the finances at the house. She knows Jesus provided everything. But how does she activate, for example, angelic protection for her kids Absolutely. that she's concerned about? Well, I'll share with you what my mom prayed over me many times. No evil shall befall you. No plague come near your dwelling. And I'm going to add, the Lord God is your son and shield, and the Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does he withhold to them who walk uprightly before him. I want to share that with you because if you quote scriptures like that, angels hear that. And according to Psalm 29, verse 7, the voice of God divides the flames of fire, or they become activated by it. They're sent out into regiments. They, they're separated to assignment when they hear the voice of God. When you put the Word of God in you and you speak it out in faith in a prayer manner, you'll begin to activate angels and they'll go to work for you. I just begin to pray for those who are watching right now over that. Lord, that you would begin to bring a revelation of your written word, mixing it with faith so we can activate angels for empowerment, to take territory. I pray over every family, every young person, every mother who's concerned in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, I'm stirred right now for people that are watching this program. I'm stirred over you by the Holy Spirit, that the Lord is saying to many of you, there are witty ideas and inventions he has for you that as you begin to pray this way there's going to be things delivered from heaven to you by angels I don't mean they're going to appear and give you things I mean I believe there's going to be witty ideas that suddenly come to you something is going to manifest for many of you when it comes to witty ideas some of you are stuck you're in an impossible scenario how do I get out of this how do I get past this this difficult situation and the Lord is saying unto you it's easy with him your problems are not special, although they're difficult and we have compassion. Your problems are not special to God. He knows how to solve them. They're not too hard for him. I bless you in Jesus' name. And I command, according to Psalm 103, Psalm 91, Psalm 29, Hebrews chapter 1, Psalm 34, we release angels to deliver and break you out according to the word of God and step into all that God has for you. On a bad day, God has empowered you by the armies of heaven to be the very best there is. Now, if you have a hard time memorizing scripture, memorize Psalm 91. Amen. Because nearly everything you need is in Psalm 91. I've quoted it so many times. I memorize it just by reading it and quoting it. Our sons can quote it, pray it over your kids, pray it over your body, pray it over your house. I mean, everything is in that chapter that you really you need for life. But Joseph, yes, what is a witty invention? It's a creative idea. The Proverbs talk about a witty inventions that are given by God. People say that all the time, and I know people wonder, what does that mean, a witty invention? Well, it's probably an idea that would make somebody money. It's, it's an idea that will come to you, an invention to do something. It's a, it's a solution to a difficult problem. It's something God would give you. You know, Daniel was given the ability to solve enigmas, impossible knots. He would unravel them. And I believe God is doing that for people right now in this broadcast. Mm. I do. Wonderful. Witty inventions. Wonderful. Yes. Well, wow, we have really covered a lot of material this week. We have. And I can't think of one thing we've covered that I haven't enjoyed same here, Rick. I really enjoyed when we talked about God taking those angels and oh, assigning yeah. them to Tartarus. Oh, my. He brought, it's amazing. He judged them because it was against his family. 
they came against his family. We're talking about angels of light. Angels of light, the wicked angels. The wicked angels. They came against God's family. They tried to pollute them. But according to Hebrews 12, verse 22, there are innumerable companies of angels, innumerable numbers. My friends, there are so many angels. In fact, really, if you do the math, there are more angels than there are human beings. Wow. And it seems that the scripture teaches that there are two guardian angels for every person. We'll just take the planet of the earth and multiply it by two. So there has to be at least that many angels. And there are chariots and chariots and chariots and chariots. There really are. This is not just figurative speech. There are warring angels. There are different classifications of angels. There's a whole hierarchy of angels and different kinds of angels are identified in the Bible. All angels don't do the same thing. And you know what else is amazing? What's that? No angel ever saw the face of God until Jesus was born. They covered their faces. They were not allowed to look into the face of God. Amazing. And that's why Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 3 that God was seen of angels. Amazing. That's one reason they all showed up when Jesus was born. For the first time, they could see the face of God in the person of Jesus Christ. Wow. I think that's amazing. I do too. Oh, the it's, Bible is just so wonderful. It's remarkable. But we're out of time. But Joseph, I want to say thank you. Oh, Rick. For thank being you, with sir. me. This has really been a privilege. I love you. And Father, I ask you to bless Joseph's ministry. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that our viewers would tune in to watch you as well. Wow, Rick. In Jesus' name, I amen. Thank amen. Thank you, sir. Hey, we'll be back in just a moment, and Joseph and I are going to pray for you. God has dispatched angels, servants of fire, to assist and help believers. Joseph Z. and Rick Renner sat down to delve into the subject of angelic ministry that is available to the church and you, and how to activate their service in the life of every believer. This powerful five-part series with Joseph Z. and Rick Renner covers topics like Exactly who and what are angels? Exactly who and what are fallen angels? The hierarchy of angels, what angels do and what they do not do. This incredible series is available in digital and physical format starting at just $10. We're also offering you Joseph Z's book, Servants of Fire, Secrets of the Unseen War and Angels Fighting for You. Servants of Fire delivers sound biblical instruction to unveil the realm of the spirit and bring to pass the will, plans and purposes of God on the earth. It dives deep into the subject of angels and makes it all understandable to those who have hungry hearts and want to experience angelic ministry. Rick Renner says, I've read a lot of books about angels over the years, but this is the best, most comprehensive and helpful book I've ever read on this subject. It was so captivating that I read it from cover to cover in a single setting. Anyone who wants to understand the realm of angels and their ministry to us needs to read this book. Order Servants of Fire today for $22. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series, Servants of Fire, and the book, Servants of Fire by Joseph Z. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. This is Rick Renner and my friend, I'm coming to you from what's going to be the new studio in our building in Moscow. And just recently, our team moved into this building. They wandered through the hallways in amazement at what God has provided. And I wanna say thank you to you because God used you to make this dream come to pass. And I also want to say thank you for the way that you're helping us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. I know people don't get excited about retiring debt, but I do because once that debt is taken care of on the Tulsa building, suddenly all of those finances are going to be released and to enable us to take the teaching of the Bible further to the ends of the earth. And just like we're now occupying this building, praise God, we're occupying the Tulsa building. There are people everywhere, employees that are taking calls, answering letters, responding to emails. That office is about ministering to people and ministering to our partners. We are a ministry that is extremely serious about taking care of people. If you've ever reached out to us, you know that when you call us, you really get prayed for. That's a very serious part of our ministry. And when we retire the debt on that wonderful Tulsa building, suddenly money will be released 
so we can take the teaching of the Bible through all kinds of media to the very ends of the earth. And between this office here and the office in Tulsa and our team around the world, my friends, God's grace is enabling us to do more than we would have ever thought or imagined possible. But that's what the grace of God does. It empowers us to do what we could never do by ourselves. And I wanna say thank you to you again for your part. And if you're not already a part of the giving team to help us retire that debt, would you please pray about becoming part of the giving team and together we can retire that debt and move on so that then we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the very ends of the earth. That's our call. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And together with your help, we're feeding many people all over the world the wonderful Word of God. And I wanna say thank you in advance for being a part of our giving team. Well, my friend, today I'm a little sad because we're ending the week with Joseph Z, and I don't want it to end. Joseph, we have had such a good time together. We have. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You came all the way to Russia to be on oh, my program. Rick, it's my privilege. I, I, you know, I watch you every day, and I'm so grateful to you for all you've taught me and the body of Christ. Thank you for having me. Well, it's our privilege that you're here, and I want you to get the series, which is called Servants of Fire. It's everything that you've heard in the programs this week, but it comes with a study guide. I want you to really read all the material while you see it or hear it. Please order this by going online or by giving us a call. And today is the last day that you can order it on our program. And today is also the last day which we're making available Servants of Fire. And yesterday and today, we talked quite a bit about how you can activate angelic assistance. And the last chapter of this book is what? Oh, it's dedicated. It's a prayer manual for how to activate angels. And you need this last chapter. It will really walk you through the scriptures that you need to activate the assistance of angels in your life, and not just in your life, in the life of your spouse, over your kids, over your home, over your business. There are so many ways you can activate the ministry of angels in your life. Now, we don't want to become obsessed with angels, but hey, if they're standing there twiddling their thumbs because we're not activating them, it's time for us to begin to speak the word of God and let them begin to serve us. Yes. That's what they've been sent to do. But today's the last day which we're offering this book. So please order it today. Order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And when you reach out to us, I remind you again, please let us know how to pray for you. And we're going to pray for you right now. Father, what a privilege that this week, Joseph and I could be together as we talk about the wonderful ministry of angels that have been sent forth Thank to you. minister to the heirs of salvation. Help us to learn how to activate their assistance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'll see you in the next program. But until then, please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there's, there's power. power. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.